Hey what is up everybody, in today's video we are going to talk about JavaScript promises. Many people struggle with understanding how promises work, so in this video I will try to explain them as simple as possible. Promises are a broader topic and we can't go into every detail, but I will give an overall information about what promises are, some terms like resolve, reject, chaining, and also we are gonna create and use a promise with a code example. But before we begin, I have another video about JavaScript callback functions and I recommend you also to watch it if you don't know what callbacks are. These are related topics, so if you learn callbacks first, you will have a better understanding for this video. Promises are one of the ways to deal with asynchronous operations in JavaScript. A promise in JavaScript is similar to a promise in real life. When we make a promise in real life, we guarantee that we are going to do something in the future because promises are always for the future. And promises have two possible outcomes. A promise that is made in the past will be either kept when the time comes or it won't. This is also the same for promises in JavaScript. When we define a promise in JavaScript, it will resolve the promise when the time comes or it will reject the promise. So there are three states of the promise object as pending, resolved and rejected. The pending state is the initial state of a promise before it succeeds or fails. The resolved state is a promise that is completed successfully and a rejected promise is a failed promise. Each of them has their own methods and we're gonna see how to use them very soon. But before we start coding, let me explain this diagram first. For example, let's think about when we make a request from the server by using a promise at the beginning, it will be in pending mode until we receive our data. If we achieve to get the information from the server, then the promise will be resolved successfully. But if you don't achieve to get the information, this can be a reason like a failed connection attempt or timeout maybe, then the promise will be rejected. And if there are multiple requests, then after the first promise is resolved or rejected, then a new process will start which we can attach directly by a method called chaining. Before we start coding, let me shortly explain what chaining is. Here you see two code examples. The first one is written just with ordinary callback functions and the same code is written with a promise in the second example. The main difference between callback functions and promises is that we can attach a callback to a promise like here, rather than passing callbacks to other functions. As you can see, callback functions are passed to other callback functions in the first code, but in the second one, they are chained with the then and with the catch uh, methods. So we still use callback functions with promises, but in a different way, and this usage is called chaining. In addition, the first code example is much difficult to follow, to read and maintain because we need to pass more and more callbacks one inside another as the number of async operations grow. This is a term called the callback hell and in this case, like making multiple requests, using promises is an advantage. Ok, now let's jump into code and see how to create and use our first promise. For creating a promise, firstly we define a variable and use a constructor to create a new promise object. And now we are getting an error because there is no function defined yet, so let's define a function inside of it. And we can do this with an arrow function, like this. Now since a promise will be later resolved or rejected, the function takes two parameters as resolve and reject. Next, there will be a condition, and if the condition is met, the promise will be resolved, otherwise it will be rejected. So let's say we want to establish a connection with a database, so let connection, and normally this should be assigned to a real API, but since we don't have it, let's set it to true. So if the connection is established, then we can call the resolve parameter and let's define a message inside of it by saying, for example, connection established. Okay, but if the connection is failed, then 
In this case, the promise will return the reject parameter and say connection refused. Okay, that's all. Now we have created our first promise. So now we can use it. If the promise is resolved successfully, then we need to call my promise and the then method for resolved promises. Then we can decide what to do with the resolved promise. For example, let's log the message to the console that we're receiving with the promise. So let's say here a um, message, and that will be also an arrow function, which logs a message to the console like this. Okay, now save. And we can see that since the connection is successful and the promise is resolved, we can see the message that the promise has brought. So what if it fails? Then this time for the rejected case, we need to use the catch method and we can chain it directly after the then method. So catch and again, just print the message to the console. So let's copy this function here and that should be fine. Okay, now let's change this to false. And if the connection is not there, then we should see the connection refused message. So let's save it. And as we can see, this time the message has changed because the case is false and the promise is rejected. So promises in JavaScript are a broader topic and understanding how they work is not easy and definitely takes time. I hope you find this video helpful and if you do, please hit the like button. And if you want to learn more about web development, subscribe to my channel and activate the bell so when I upload a new video, you will get notified. Thank you guys for watching.